It's one way so it won't let the clear take off. YouTube, I'm Amy from cybernews.com and I'm standing here at one of the top three biggest independent aviation training centers in Europe. This is one of the very places that pilots train before leveling up to the airlines that we all know and use. So today we will explore the fascinating world of aviation and take a look at some super cool flight simulators. Flight simulators basically recreate aircraft flight artificially Flight simulation goes back as far as 1929, starting with the first simulator created by Edwin Albert Link, named the pilot maker or the Link trainer. This invention kick-started the commercialization and mass production of flight simulation. No doubt we have come a long way since the grandfather of plane simulators that was, believe it or not, built from scrap parts unbelievable. That is why I am standing here today at BAA training. Underneath, a pretty impressive simulator. So now we're going to enter into the Boeing 737 simulator. Now this is only a couple of years old and it has really top-notch accurate technology and students would generally spend about nine sessions in here about four hours each time. So without further ado, let's go inside. So we are inside and I'm joined by an engineer called Arturis here from BA Training and he's going to show me all of the ropes so I'm very excited. Let's take flight. Okay. Okay. Are you ready to take off? I am ready, yes. Okay. Let's drop off the parking brake. Woo! Wow, this is... This is kind of scary, honestly. It's very realistic. Oh! Woo! This is really insane. The view is phenomenal. This is about, yeah, one kilometer above the ground. Like okay. 3,000 feet. We're going to try to land this thing now. Oh wow, I actually see the light. Probes. Yeah. They're leading to our runway. Wow! You see our runway is on the right side. Oh wow! It's mostly like landing on an air carrier ship. Secret. 20. 10. You see how it's getting? Yes. Oh my goodness. This is kind of terrifying. Ooh. Ooh. Let's reject this landing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. I'm just blown away by how realistic everything is. And it's kind of calming when you're up in the air. But I know that that landing is coming, so I'm a little apprehensive right now. Are you nervous? A little, yeah. 50, 30, 10. Oh. Smooth! Well, like a passenger. We've touched base though, we've touched base. We did. We made it. Okay, we've gone from sunny Madeira to rainy Gatwick. Typical. Let's see how this experience holds up. When it's wet and conditions like this, does it affect actually your movement? Would it be slippery? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, interesting. It not only a visual. It would be realistic, yeah? yeah. Oh, this is fast. So you can feel the difference. This is when very we're on the fast. Yes, this is fast. Whoa. so detailed you know you can see the raindrops coming you can see the lightning the thunder we're inside a cloud right now and visually we can't see anything it's very disorientating it's a strange feeling how do you know that the plane is communicating with the ground and also how do you know the path is clear and there's no other planes in the way yeah there are two different systems one is called like EGPWS, Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System, okay. to avoid collision into ground, like in mountains or flat terrain. And another system is called like a TCAS, Traffic Collision Avoidance System, okay. to avoid collision with another airplanes. We're out of the clouds, we can finally see ground. So this, this display mode is for landing, and this short line is like our runway. And that position is our 
actual position. So we need to fly a little bit more to the right side. To level up with the runway. Yeah. We're about to land in Gatwick in rainy conditions and I'm a little terrified. Ooh. We're going down, we're going down hard. Yes, really, I do. So strange. So realistically, how many of these controls would you use on a flight? In fact, during a flight, preparing for flight, you need used pretty much of them. Because each button and switch is dedicated for different function. Mm -hmm. For example, like a lower part is for exterior lights. On your side, there are some navigation lights, like a, probably you noticed like a red and green on their wingtips yeah, the, okay. and flashing beacons. Mm -hmm. Interesting, okay, yeah. So really, it's overwhelming to begin with, but I'm guessing, as you say, it is in sections, you know, so it makes a lot of sense to navigate. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. In front of us is the most commonly used uh, controls, like an autopilot panel, all the displays, mm -hmm. which indicates you like a primary flight information and navigation information. And over this section here? Over this section, there is a radio controls. Okay. like a radio navigation, audio controls. For example, if you, you are handling hand mic and you need to talk, you can choose who you Which would like to talk. Yeah. yeah. And you were saying this cockpit is a realistic size? Absolutely. Basically. For example, right now we are sitting in a Boeing 737-800, mm -hmm. which is referred like a group of NG, new generation. Okay. So it's a specific size, exactly the same replica as for Boeing 737 NG. Okay, so I want to just ask really quick, from a kind of cybersecurity standpoint, yeah. of course, with these newer models, they can connect to the internet. So is there any way that you kind of safeguard yourself from hijacking or any kind of situation from that perspective? Yeah, from that perspective, we are saving like in very, very old school mode. Just unplug the cable. Okay. This is <laughs> step number one. Yeah. It's quite obvious. We're putting back the cable when we actually need to do something to connect to outside of the building. Okay. For instance, to upload any updates mm -hmm. from simulator manufacturer. As well, if we need some assistance from simulator manufacturer to connect to simulator and do some investigation for like a software, doing diagnostics, etc. But, but it is like a time limited sessions. Yeah, sure. And all the time when the sim is connected to internet, it's connected using the hardware firewall. Oh, good. I mean, obviously, yeah, because you're working with such a big kind of heavy machinery. And yeah. if someone was to hijack this, it would be, you know, it could be really terrible, you know, if they were to control it kind of remotely or something. At least it would be quite a long downtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is not acceptable. <laughs> no, no. Pilots need to be in the sky, don't they? Absolutely. So, yeah. Okay, I just want to say first and foremost, a massive thank you to Arturis here. It's been a really enjoyable experience. And if you at home there are interested in any flight simulation, you don't even have to be, want to be a pilot, just want to come and enjoy the experience. They work globally and down in the description, I'm going to put some links for their website. So be sure to check that out. That was an unbelievable experience. I really highly recommend it to anybody. I mean, we took flight twice around Madeira with really sunny skies, unbelievable. And the landing there is super complicated. And then we went off from Gatwick. And it was so realistic, honestly, with the rain in the storm, I could see the lightning, you know, you could really feel the movements in the wind, everything. It was just unbelievable. Now, honestly, I'm a fully fledged pilot. I've had about one hour in the sky. So please give me some privacy and get out of my cockpit.